Good morning. It's 7.30 and uh, this is Morning Devotions. I'm Brother Ron. Uh, it's good to see you on. I uh, hope you're having a blessed week. Um, I'm out here in the backyard. I've got my coffee. I've got my Bible. And of course, my cat is with me. She has to be uh, with me wherever I go. And uh, so she's out there. I'll show her in a minute. Uh, this morning, I was thinking about the, the, the a scripture. And uh, I want to read from the Gospels. And there's a story um, in the book of John, chapter 6. And I'm going to be reading two verses. But I've got two questions for you. The first question is, when things get hard, when life comes at you unexpectedly with things that just are out of your control, what is your go-to or who is your go-to uh, person? Do you turn to God? Uh, do you turn to friends? Do you turn to family members? Um, who, who is that? Whom, who do you go to? The second question is, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe every word that it says? I mean, it's easy for us to say yes. I mean, right now we're in uh, morning devotions uh, and we're amongst brothers and sisters and we would say, oh yes, it's easy to believe the word. But when things get hard or there's difficulties or obstacles, our faith can sometimes be uh, tested. Uh, we can get discouraged and then we can it can lead to doubt on what God really said. And uh, something like that is, is happening in the passage that we're going to read. So I'm going to set my coffee down real quick. Right. And uh, I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translations, John chapter 6. And I'm going to pick up at verse 66 through 69. It says like this, at this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe. And we know you are the Holy One of God. Kind of to give you a background of what is happening, because we've kind of dropped in on a scene here. But in the beginning of the chapter, uh, Jesus had fed the 5,000. Great miracle. Five loaves, two fishes, and uh, 5,000. Well, they just estimate 5,000 to be the count of men. It was probably double that because you account for women and children. And he starts to teach them. And in the, in the middle of his teaching, he talks about he is the bread of life. He talks about how they have to partake. He talks about how they're going to have to eat his body, drink his blood. And this is a hard saying for them because they began to think in the natural and think, and they thought he was promoting cannibalism, but he wasn't. He was speaking spiritually, but they would, didn't have spiritual eyes or spiritual ears to hear what he was saying. And in the verses before, uh, bef just before the ones I read, it says that many of his disciples deserted him because of these things. Uh, they didn't understand. They, 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 they loved to follow Jesus while he was providing for them, while he was healing them, while he was, you know, doing miracles. But now here's the first test. Hey, this is what you're going to need to do. And right away they abandoned him. And so he turns to his 12 and he says, are you also going to leave? Are you also going to turn away? Is this too hard of a saying for you? Is this too, too much for you? And Peter says, no. Who do, who do we go to? Who can we turn to? I ask that first question because sometimes we do turn to everyone else but God in those difficult times. We're looking for that answer from a person when God is the one that we are to turn to. And, uh, and we are to believe 
just as the disciples, they believed that he had the words of life. Even when all our senses, even when their senses, but for us, even when all of our senses tell us this is impossible, this is too difficult. Our faith needs to override that to say, but God is in control. But God is with me. But God promised me. But God will never leave me nor forsake me. I believe. I believe. And, and I know that he will see me through. Because who else do we have? We have to abandon all, all the other options and make Jesus the primary option in our life every time, every moment to where we, it's like our default setting. Trouble comes our way, we run to Jesus. Things seem difficult, we run to Jesus. Things are going great, we run to Jesus. We don't get distracted with the, the, the blessings. We run to Jesus. We run to him, we turn to him because he's the one that has the words of life. He's the one that that because of what he did, we have eternal, the hope of eternal life. And so we can put our trust in him. The second question was, do you believe that? Beloved, I want you, I want to encourage you this morning to, to get into God's word and to allow it to, to renew your mind because we all have default settings uh, that, that have been established in us by how we were raised, uh, um, how uh, life, things in our life shaped and formed us and how we respond. And we need to clear that. We need to, we need to hit the delete button and clear all of that and download what God has for us, the prescription that he has for us so that our default setting becomes Christ every time. Our default setting becomes his word. It's the place that we run to. I'm not saying that we don't need each other. We need each other, okay? It's good to have brothers and sisters that we can turn to that'll come alongside of us. But that's not our, our dependency. That's not the, the, those people will fail us. I'll fail you. A pastor will fail you. But Jesus will never fail us. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Well, let's pray and then I'll see who's joined us this morning. Father, we just come before you this morning. We thank you, oh God, for this wonderful day that you have granted to us. You are the giver of life, Lord, and we praise you. We exalt you. Lord, we are grateful, Father, for this, uh, this event that took place while you walked this earth. We are grateful, Lord, that it was recorded for us to see and, 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 and see the resolve of the 12 to say, uh, who do we have but you? Who do we turn to but you? I pray this morning that we would also have that same resolve that no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, no matter what report we receive, we turn to you. We don't turn to anyone else. We turn to you. You're our, we, you're our default setting. We come to you, Jesus, because you are the, the one who gives life. You give eternal life. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people this morning, my brothers and sisters that are tuning in right now, those that will tune in later. I pray that you would minister to them, Lord. You would provide for them. You would bring comfort. You would bring healing. And you would bring provision. But most importantly, Lord, that you would increase their faith to believe what your word says. Lord, we look forward to your return. May we continue to draw closer to you as your return draws closer to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's see who's on. Actually, my cat decided to go run away. The sun is coming up, so I'm gonna try to change this over here. You guys are going to see my face while I, uh, oh, hold on real quick. I'm going to make some adjustments. There we go. There we go. 
that's better. We can still see the sun. So we'll go to. Okay. Good morning, Sister Sylvia. Good to see you on. Pastor Maria, Christine Thompson, RJ in Georgia. Glad you could join us. Brother Alfredo, Martiza. Good morning. Becky Sloma, good morning. Virginia, good morning. Laura Lynn, good morning. Good morning, Joe and Mary Taylor. Good morning, Scoot Vaughn. Ivy Keller, good morning. Sister Barbara, good morning. You as well, have an awesome day in Jesus. Sister Karen, Rose, good morning. Good morning, Brother Edwin. Judy Burke, good morning. Terry. Amen. I have always gone to the word and God has always come through. Not always the way I wanted, but always his way is better. Amen for that. In his sovereignty, he knows what's best for us. Uh, Judy Burke, please pray for my brother-in-law. They just found out he got cancer. Amen. Father, we just come before you and we lift up Judy's brother-in-law. Lord, there is nothing too hard for you. We turn to you. You are the great physician. We ask for healing in Jesus' name for your honor and your glory. Amen. Amen, Sister Laura. We, we've been praying for you. I've been praying for you. And the Lord will see you through. Continue to... Uh, find comfort and rest in him. He cares for us. All right. Well, that seems like it's everybody that's on. Have a blessed day in Jesus. And uh, we'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye.